The Nutcracker and the Mouse King by E. T. A. Hoffman Chapter 1 Christmas Eve All through the day of Christmas Eve, Dr. Stahlbaum's children had not been allowed into the dining room, much less into the drawing room opening out of it. In a corner of the back parlor, Fred and Mary sat cuddled up together, shuddering with the excitement of mystery, for, though twilight had come on, nobody brought in any lights this evening. Fred whisperingly told his seven-year-old sister how, since early in the morning, he had listened to the stir and the bustle and the soft hammerings in these forbidden chambers. Also how, not long ago, a small, dark man, with a great box under his arm, had come slipping over the floor, but he knew well that this was nobody else than Godfather Drosselmeyer. Then Mary clapped her little hands for joy, crying, Ah, what fine things will Godfather Drosselmeyer have made for us! Counselor Drosselmeyer, so people called him, was far from a handsome man, short and thin, with many wrinkles on his face, and a great black patch where his right eye should have been. Also, he had no hair on his head, so he wore a very fine white wig, which seemed to be all made of glass, so clever a piece of work was it. The godfather himself indeed was a very clever workman, who actually knew all about clocks and could even make them with his own hands. When any of the fine clocks in the stallbound's house went out of order and did not strike, Godfather Drosselmeyer would come, take off his glass wig and his drab coat, tie on a blue apron, and stick sharp things into the clock's inside, so that little Mary felt quite sorry for it. But this did the clock no harm, which, on the contrary, got to life again, and at once began to tick, strike, and chime, to the delight of all the family. He never came without bringing something pretty in his pockets for the children. Now a puppet that could move its eyes and make bows, most comic to behold. Now a box out of which could hop a little bird, or something else of the kind. But for Christmas, he always prepared some grand, elaborate piece of work that cost him much trouble, on which account, when given to the children, it was carefully taken charge of by their parents. Ah, what fine things will Godfather Drosselmeyer have made for us, Mary wondered. But Fred was of opinion it could this time be no other than a castle, in which all kinds of beautiful soldiers marched up and down, and were drilled, and other soldiers were to come, who should try to get into the castle. But then the soldiers inside would fire off cannons, and there would be such grand booming and banging. No, no, Mary cut him short. Godfather Drosselmeyer has told me of a beautiful garden with a great pond in it, on which splendid swans with gold bands round their necks are to swim about and sing such pretty songs. Then a little girl will run up from the garden and call the swans to her and feed them with gingerbread. Swans don't eat gingerbread, broke in Fred rather rudely and Godfather Drosselmeyer could not make a whole garden. Anyhow, we get a few of the toys he makes. They are always taken away from us. So I like much better the things Papa and Mamma give us, which we have for our very own, and can do as we like with them. Then the children went on guessing and guessing what it would be this time. Mary remarked how Missy Gertrude, her big doll, was much changed for the worse, since she kept tumbling on the floor more awkwardly than ever, which never happened without leaving dirty marks on her face. And as for keeping her clothes clean, that was out of the question. All the scoldings in the world thrown away on her. Fred, for his part, dwelt on the fact that a fine wooden horse was much wanted in the stable, 
also how his toy soldiers were greatly deficient in cavalry, as his papa must be aware. These children knew well that their parents had bought for them all sorts of fine presents, yet they were persuaded that Father Christmas looked on them with friendly eyes, and bestowed from his bounteous hand the gifts that came more welcome now than at any other time. As they kept on whispering over the expected presents, their older sister Louisa came to remind them that it is Father Christmas who, through the hands of their dear parents, always supplies what will afford them real joy and pleasure, as he knows better how to do than children themselves, who should therefore not be wishing and hoping for all sorts of things, but quietly and dutifully await what it is to be given to them. Little Mary became thoughtfully silent, but Fred murmured to himself, I should like a horse and some hussars, though. It had grown quite dark. Fred and Mary, sitting closely side by side, did not care to speak a word. They fancied they could hear a fluttering of soft wings about them, and a strain of beautiful music in the distance. A bright light gleamed upon the walls. Then they knew that Father Christmas was flying away on shining clouds to other happy children. At once a silvery bell went cling, cling. The doors flew open, and such a brilliance streamed out of the great room that the children stood as if enchanted on the threshold, with loud exclamations of wonder. But Papa and Mamma came forward and took Fred and Mary by the hand, saying, Come along, come along, dear children, and see what Father Christmas has given you.